there's been a lot of talk about my friend Sam Lurkin's design, the Hurok. Uh, reason so is because it's a hell of a little knife. I had kind of mentioned the other day it's a big little knife and my buddy Roger wholeheartedly agreed. Sam named this knife after one of his dogs. So you know when a guy that's really into dogs names a knife design after his favorite dog, it's, it's got to be something that's near and dear to him. I'm fortunate to have two of them. Uh, I was gifted his JS Hurok. By the way, this, this sheath is by Gustav, his friend. Fantastic leather sheath, beautifully well done, really nice. Meant to be carried either scout style or cross draw, which most of your Hurok sheaths you see come if you're getting leather with them from, from Sam with a type of a cross draw sheath. The knife lends itself to being carried really well that way. It's small enough and compact enough that it rides just perfectly right at the cross draw position. This one is a, a fantastic piece. Again, sheath made by Gustav. It's iron wood. W2 blade. The knife design is really what has made this knife so popular. And what that design is, is Sam doesn't skimp when it comes to handles, especially on this ironwood piece. The handle's a big hand. I have a large hand, not a giant hand. It fits me perfect. I wouldn't want it any smaller. Uh, my good friend Steven, um, not so much. He doesn't like full-size handles and he would hate this, but for my hand, I don't know how you'd want it any smaller. It just really fills the hand perfectly. In a stabbing position, the way the knife is arced lends itself to a saber grip. Just fantastic, I incredible. Just a knife that doesn't have a great grip for a knife that you're using as a combat knife or a knife that you're gonna carry for personal protection, the grip is everything. When you're frazzled and your, your nerves are bad and you're working totally on, on me muscle memory, you need, when you, when you grab for that knife, you need to be able to grab and really get a hold of it. I can't see how you could even get this out of your hand if you had a good grip on it. It's fantastic. Another feature that makes this knife so fantastic is the tip. Sam's done almost like if you were back into the, the muzzy days of broadheads, like a, like a trocar tip. It's just fantastic little clip point, just raised enough. You could do some back cuts if you, you know, even though it's, it's not designed for that type of knife, it's a very small knife. It's only about a five inch blade, but the tip is just so well designed. Good little belly to the blade, aggressive serrations on the back that if you, ha if you wanted to choke up there, just lays right there perfectly. Again, this is Sam's JS knife that was gifted to me by Sam, one of the most generous gifts in, in the knife world I've ever gotten. The only one that really bumps that up is, is the great Paul Long once gave me a Bagwell Bowie knife in full dress leather and uh, that was my greatest knife gift ever. <laughs> But again, I just can't speak more about the design. It's a big little knife. It's a lot of confidence. It really fills the head. Again, this one is the Ironwood one with the W2 blade that was gifted to me as JS knife. Again, Sam, thank you. Fantastic. Very nice sheath by Gustav. Lovely. I'm fortunate because I have a user variant, which everybody knows I love the black micarta. This is the Marigen steel, which is a steel that is, is known to be very rust resistant. Uh, I haven't spent enough time with it. I have had this knife a little bit. I have sharpened it once on a diamond stick. It seems to be very good at holding an edge. This has been, when I'm carrying a fixed blade because of the size, has been my carry knife. This sheath is from Jeremy, one of uh, Sam's friends did a great job and we'll go into this sheet a little later on because I, I want to show some points on that but just again 
I don't know how guys like Sam, Jason Knight, Nick Wheeler, they can redo a, the same knife over and over again freehand and come out with a knife that is so close. I mean, truly masters. This handle is a bit more robust, but other than that, the blade, the handle shape, everything. I don't know how they do it. Again, look at the curve of the blade. Look how it drops into saber grip. I'm not a big reverse grip proponent, but if you're drawing, I carry left side carry because I carry a gun on the right. If you are drawing, left hand, cross draw straight out. Just fantastic, just fantastic. Again, wonderful knife. Again, Jeremy did this sheath. Right now, Paul Long, I believe, is doing a variant for Dudley. I'm really excited to see it. This is a great sheath. He did a great job. Where the stud goes through, it was a bit, it could have been tighter, but again, to be fair to Jeremy, he did the, he did the sheath without having the knife in hand. So what I did, got a little bit creative, knife fits in there beautifully. Biggest part about when you kick a sheath off is the strap comes off, you draw the knife, you cut the strap. No one likes that. The original hole was a little higher. What I did was stitched, here was the original hole, then the, the cut line here for the Sam Brown stud to pop through. I stitched that with an artificial black sinew. I love the stuff. I carry it in my kit all the time. Um, it's a fantastic survival tool. You can break down the strand count. You can stitch yourself up with it. When you're done stitching, you, you, and not in yourself, but in leather, you can singe the ends with a lighter. It, 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 it makes a nice hard ball. I've sewed everything from hunting pants to boots to knife cheese to tents to you name it with black artificial sinew. Just a wonderful thing. Should be in everybody's kit. But what I liked was, what I thought was, if I could add some weight to the top here. So I had a turquoise stud that I could peen in there. So after stitching it, I epoxied and peened a turquoise stud, which has a little bit of weight to it. Then I gave the relief slit here. So therefore, when you break the tab, it drops down. Drawing the knife clean without cutting the tab. It really worked out for the best, and I'm really thrilled at how it worked out. And I think from now on, I'm always going to have them give me enough tag that I can put a little bit of a weight there. Then when I pop it, it drops clean. Just a, a really worked out perfect. Another thing Jeremy did on this sheet that at first I was a, a very, a little bit, it, it's a little bit actually longer than the knife. And after playing with it, I felt a wedge in here. And I thought, wow. Then after exposing it open and taking a look, he actually has constructed, I don't know if you can see it in here, a little wedge in the tip, a reinforced tip, that when the knife blade slides down, it cams in and locks and sets down into here. Bring the strap up around, very secure. Just a really nice package. Again, meant to be carried cross straw. My favorite way to carry a fixed blade of this size. Or you could carry it scout. Well, I just wanted to make a quick video explaining some of the design features of this knife. Sam did a fantastic job. It really is one of my favorite knife designs. And uh, I love it. Thanks for looking. Bye-bye. Okay, I just wanted to explain a little bit how I carry cross draw with this style sheath. I'm a big proponent of strong side carry, always carrying the same things in the same spots, really working with muscle memory. I always carry a gun on the right side. I always carry a knife on my weak side, my left side. If it's a folder or a fixed blade, it's usually anymore cross draw horizontal right here. A folder would be in a pouch or a sheath, a fixed blade in a holster or sheath like this. A larger fixed blade would be carried behind the hip, but same general area. 
Again, big proponent of muscle memory, always reaching for the same spots all the time. I just think it's the only way if you're ever gonna really be sure, can you really ever be sure, but it's the only way you're ever gonna at least have a chance to react in a situation where you're relying only on instinct and only on repetitive motions. Very quick, the little bit of weight that I added to the strap, once you break the strap, it drops clear. Very fast to draw, very convenient. Super quick way. Again, in a weapons retention situation where you're hold of your gun, you can't let go of the gun. All your focus is keeping your gun in your holster. If your knife's on your right side, you can't do anything. That's why it's critical. Break the strap, knife out quickly, upward slash, downward thrust. I mean, the ice pick grip with a weak hand draw can be very fast, very effective. For riding in a car, this is a very comfortable way to carry. It never binds. It, it's right on your hips when you sit down. There's no discomfort. Great way to carry. Great knife design. Great sheath design. Thanks for looking. Bye-bye.